I'm CK, and in my ongoing quest for the best desoldering tool at the lowest price, we've moved on to uh, Hiwa desoldering iron. It looks like a combo of a solder sucker and a desoldering iron, so that could be pretty interesting. It's not inexpensive. This came in at about $39 US on Amazon, which is more than some of the others I've tried. But we'll give it a try. Have it all in one hand might be very interesting. And, as always, I hope you enjoy the video. There's the box again. And this is a iron solder sucker in the same package, so the main advantage, for me at least, is right now when I'm desoldering using a solder sucker, I have to use both hands, and that means I have to clamp the circuit board in place. With this one, it should eliminate that need. Now, of course, it is a solder sucker, so in general that means it's only going to be good for through hole components, not surface mount. Even though you, you can use it that way, it's just really, you got to be really careful. So I've got one board that's got through hole plating on the component holes, and one board that's got just uh, the solder pads on the back. Let's open the box up. Take that out. Take my little stand out, take some various pieces of paper out, and we'll get the box ready for recycling. Hit myself in the side of the head with it that time. Now let's see what we've got. We've got a solder stand, soldering iron stand, which is good. I'll flip that up, put it over there. Here we've got couple of things, and I'll talk about some of what they say are their advantages while I do that. We've got different size nozzles, so we have three total nozzle sizes. We've got a cleaning wire, and we pull this out, and they say that this lever, this lever is not, oops, and there goes one of my tips. Huh, that uh, feels almost damped. It's not going up as strongly as my other one. Put my finger on the end and you can see the piston slowly goes up if it's restricted. That's interesting, but unrestricted goes up just fine. It's got this little heat barrier, theoretically, they say, to help you do things more effectively. It also says it's easy to take apart and clean. So let's see. Heating element locking screw. Operation. And nozzle cleaning. Heat it up, then heating element cleaning. And storage team cleaning. Turn off, wait for the storage tube is cooled completely. And then lift and pull out the storage tube. Okay, I'm going to do that right now just so we can see how easily it works. I'm not sure exactly how they mean to pull it out. Let me look at the picture again. Put my little fingers around the piston rod and lift and pull it out. Lift lift and pull out. Lift and pull out. There we go. Oh, it's got clippies. Okay. Oh yeah, you can clean that chamber very easily. And there's some good lubricant on the piston. And this is supposed to have been locked in, huh? But it didn't. Clip that back in. Double check that it's all working right. And it is. Okay, next step will be to plug this guy in. Oh, next step is to look at the label. Remove before use. Product contains an electrical insulator. Uh, 
mica, it's normal for the product to emit white fumes for no longer than 20 minutes on first use. So it'll be a little smoky as we turn this on, which I don't mind, if you don't mind. Trying to get the silly tie wrap off it. Well, let me read what it says here. 30 watt, 110, 127 volt, 60 hertz. Nothing else. So let me look at this other piece of paper just to see. Oh, there goes some guy. My next door neighbor. Leaf blowing around his house. I hope I'm going to keep talking and assume that the noise canceling on my microphones is taking care of that. I'm going to plug this in. Hold on one second while I dig around on the floor for my power strip. Now it is plugged in and I believe I see yes there is an LED indication that it's on. So that's good. We'll wait for it to warm up. I'll speed through that. Or actually, I'll just clip that out. It is heating up. I came back on with the cameras live just so you can see that there is wisps of smoke coming out as the mica or whatever burns off. I'm using my little dab of solder to see if the iron's hot. And it is. It's hot enough to melt solder. So let me give this a quick try. Again, I can hand hold the iron instead of, I mean the circuit board, instead of trying to futz around. So I'm going to Put it right there. Hit the suck button. Oh no, that's very nice. Get the other end of that diode. And I can, it's a little long for my thumb to reach, but certainly not bad. I can do it one-handed. Do a little more on that one. Set this down for a minute. See if this diode will pop off. And yeah, came right off. Wow, that was very good. That's a very good little iron. Now, I wish I knew where the diode just evacuated to. I can reuse that. Fortunately, diodes are like 10 cents. Now, the next test will be to see if we can do a through hole plated circuit board well. I'm going to leave that. Ow! Transferred heat very quickly to my finger on the other side. Oh gosh! It looked like that did a great job too. Holy Toledo! I think I'm going to set this down again. And yeah, even with through hole plated, that's a little snug. No, it came out. That was just because of the bend in the wire. Wow! That was impressive. This is an excellent. I'm going to go over here on this socket trace. Oh no, it cleans. Wow! Because the heat and the vacuum or negative pressure are coming from the same location, it really does a great job. Let me see. Let me get the other one, end of this one. I think it'll be this one. It's a, again a little long stretch for my thumb, but you can see I'm not having ow, not having to set anything down. And gosh, does it heat up? the work fast. You could burn in my 
index finger when I'm doing that. And look at that, it comes right out. Get my needle nose just to be a little more. Wow. Okay, uh, this works really, really well. Uh, I'm very, very impressed. I was not expecting it to be this good. Uh, one thing I'm also going to do, and you know, there somebody commented on one of my soldering iron demos about doing this. Wow, that's not good. The uh, power cord is not high temperature silicon. It will melt if you touch the tip to it. Somebody commented that that was a silly thing to do. And I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but I've been soldering for uh, 55 years. And while I haven't done it a lot, I have certainly put my iron down on the power cord accidentally at least three times in my life. And having a high temperature silicon cord is better to prevent any damage from that. Uh, but this one doesn't have one. It does. It's regular rubber, so it will melt a little bit. So you just have to be careful. Now, I, I'm so enthused about this that I'm going to try something that they don't recommend. And I'm going to get a surface mount board. Hold on a second. I mean, you don't have to hold on. You can do whatever you want. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to see if I can use this on a surface mount component. If worse comes to worse and I don't have anything, I don't have my other soldering device. I don't, I mean, I would not, obviously not recommend this. They don't recommend it, but I want to give it a try anyway because I'm the bold and adventurous type. Of course, it helps if you push the lever down. No, it's not, and that's okay. Again, it's they certainly don't advertise it. In fact, they specifically say it's not for surface mount. But let's look at this big old transformer here and see if I can get this out, because they can be a, a big old pain sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. I'm going to go through all these pins and see how fast I can take this out. I think it may take a little more coke. Oh no, it's coming up. It's coming up. These two pins have not desoldered well. Well, I, it cleaned up very well. I just have to work on uh, these two pins, and I, I'm not going to bother wasting my time uh, to my time or your time with that. But, the bottom line is, this works really well. Uh, works better than I thought it was. Quite frankly, I was a little bit skeptical, but I just unplugged it. Uh, I was a little bit skeptical, but this is very, very good. And you can use it with one hand. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it's very possible. I'm going to pull this back out again just to see how the chamber looks. Set that down so I don't set my workbench on fire. I'm going to drive this down this way. Not a lot of residue in there, that's interesting. So yeah, I can highly recommend this. If you do a lot of through-hole and you want a through-hole capable desoldering all-in-one device, this is good. Again, it's $39, so it's not the least expensive thing you have in your shop, but very, very good. And again, two more nozzles that you can use if you need them. Well worth the price. Grab one of these things. And 
I hope you enjoyed the video.